On today's show, we're going to be doing an unboxing. Yes, a real unboxing. It's been in my hands for almost 24 hours and I actually haven't opened it yet of the brand new Panasonic Lumix 10 to 25 millimeter F1.7 lens for Micro Four Thirds. <laughs> This may well be one of the single most anticipated lenses of all time for Micro Four Thirds. This is, uh, this is a thing of reported beauty. I have yet to hold in my hands, other than in the box, the actual full finished product. I've had mock-ups in my hands, I've seen pictures of final product, but I haven't actually seen it. This came yesterday and I really wanted to open it, but I decided to wait to do a show with you guys. So. With that said, let's just get this thing rolling. This is the brand new 10 to 25 millimeter F1.7 aspherical Lumix lens for Micro Four Thirds. So for your GH5, GH5S, uh, G9, what have you. And this is going to be a very, very popular lens among those who like to do video. I brought out a couple other lenses here to compare to in size. I've got here the 12 to 60, which is your kit lens with the GH5. Many of you who have GH5s will be very familiar with this. You'll be able to compare it like that. If you have the 8 to 18, I've got that here as well. So you can compare to that size, which is actually pretty similar to the 12 to 60, not that different from there. I have the 12 millimeter F1.4 lens, another very popular lens, obviously not a zoom lens. And I have the old 7 to 14 F4 lens, which is an older lens kind of replaced by the 8 to 18, but I've got the generational steps here so we can compare them all. So we're going to do that. But with that said, let's just let's just get into this thing, shall we? I think it's I think it's time to open. So let's, let's just open this thing up. I can honestly never have not opened it yet. I don't know how I resisted paperwork. Who cares about paperwork? We go into the top. What do we find in the top? We find it here probably a lens shade. That, look, that is what that looks like. That is the lens shade. That is um, as expected a large front element, which means a large lens shade. Let's just do a comparison of that, of the shade itself, to the one that goes for the 8 to 18, and you can see a pretty significant difference there already. So that's your 8 to 18 versus the new 10 to 25, and a very nice bag for it, given the size of that bag. Oh my, that is a honking bag that tells you that we've got a um, pretty good, this has got to be the fattest lens bag I have ever, and I can see it. Let's lay this on its side. It is it's lighter than I thought. I've heard this before. I have heard pretty much from everybody who's actually handled it that it is lighter than they expect it to be. That's nice. I mean, obviously, the whole one of the whole reasons of shooting Micro Four Thirds is to go for that lighter weight kit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, there it is. Oh, that is pretty. That is, wow, that is fat. <laughs> that is a big front element. That is a big fat lens. Okay. Let's get some details on here. 10 to 25, as we can see here, we've got our zoom ring on there. So you, there's your 10 out to the 25. So of course that is a 20 to 50 millimeter focal length in full frame equivalent, which is a really interesting focal length, I think. It's very nicely wide. So with your eight to 18, that was a 16 to 36 equivalent. Did I do that right? Like you want a little bit more out of it. You want a little more length out of it that you're getting on here. On the manual focus. There's this thing called a clutch, which, ah, oh, there it is. So when it's clutched up, we are in normal autofocus mode, clutch it down, and we are in manual focus. And that is, that is really nice. That feels really good in the hands. We'll see what it looks like on the camera, but that is great. I love the clutch. We've seen the clutch on the uh, 50 millimeter F1.4 lens for the L mount S series lenses, which is very, very nice. So that's something we're seeing, I believe, for the first time in Micro Four Thirds. And then, of course, there is the aperture ring, which is totally stepless. So here, listen, listen. You hear nothing, do you? There's no steps. There's a click into the auto position and then no steps, stepless aperture. So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison then we're gonna stick this thing onto the, um, onto the GH5 and have a look through it. So full size-wise, there is a significant size difference here. And we just kind of do the lineup here. Um, that is pretty, pretty significant difference in size. Obviously a bit heavier, like I said, lighter weight than I expected it to be, but that is, um, that's a big lens. Comparing to the 8 to 18, which has a filter thread size of 67 millimeters, this new one is 77 millimeters. So 77, 67 down to here. And as we go down the line, the 12 to 60 has a 62 millimeter. The 12, 1, 4 also has a 62 millimeter. And then the 7 to 14 does not have a filter thread on it. So you can't even put a filter on that lens. All right, let's get this thing on. We'll go ahead and put the lens shade on because that's how most of us are going to use this thing. Let's get this thing on my GH5 here. 
and see what we've got. All right, here's something of interest. The bottom of the lens does protrude farther than the base. So if I set this down on the tabletop, the, it is not perfectly flat at this point. Now, actually, if I take off the lens shade, are we getting? No, it's still tilted up a little bit. So the lens is physically bigger than, does protrude out farther down than the bottom of the camera. So just an important little point to know. It might matter to you if you do a lot of, let's say, a tabletop photography where you're literally setting the camera on the table. This is going to tilt up a little bit. So good to know. Very minor, but it is in there. In the hands. It's not feeling like it's weight forward. It's not like the, the 50 to 200 is a huge lens that's clearly going to be pulling forward a bit. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the weight is on the forward end of it. Clearly it's just physics, but it doesn't feel heavy in the hand. It still feels very good on there. Nice. I like it. When we zoom, our smallest position seems to be about, about the 12 millimeter range. So as you go to 10, it pokes out a little bit. Back, it pulls in, and then it pushes back out again. There's some physics of lens design in there that I have yet to ever comprehend. I then again, I haven't really looked into it, but um, isn't that kind of weird? Like it goes in and I, I, anyway, let's take a look through this thing, shall we? I think that's kind of an important next step. Let me grab my HDMI cable here, plug you in so you can see what I see. I'm going to kind of flip this thing around into a selfie mode and see what that looks like pointing back at me. We're going to open this all the way up to f1.7. Here we go. Looking through the camera. There it is. So you can see this is arm's length holding that in front of me. So you can see the field of use. Put that in perspective. This is where I'm holding it. This is, so again, a very, very vlogging. Let's get rid of the white background. You can see a little bit more clearly. Very, very vlogging type of position if you're going to do that sort of thing, if that's what you're buying this for. And you can see through there, you can see at that distance, we're getting, wow, look at the edges there. Just no distortion. Probably helps if I hold the camera level. There we go. Almost no distortion at all. Very, very clean. Look at the bar. So I'm looking at, wrong side, this side, that metal bar. There it is. And as you get close to that, you see, like, just, I, I don't want to say absolutely no distortion because someone will point out that I'm wrong, but virtually no distortion in there. Looks very, very clean. Nice bokeh on there. Nice shallow depth of field at 1.7. That is fantastic. Now let's zoom it. So to the closest distance, now, of course, that is a 50 millimeter equivalent. And now we're seeing a more pronounced bokeh, more pronounced shallow depth of field on there. And that is looking absolutely wonderful. I'm looking at another monitor. That's why I'm looking off camera here. I can't really see my little screen with that HDMI cable on it. But I'm, I'm happy. I'm, look, it is nice. It is nice. Again, if you're going to do this all day long, you know, it's heavier than your other lenses. But, um, but you're not carrying an S1 around like this, are you? It is still a Micro Four Thirds kit. It is still relatively lightweight. I'm digging it. That is, uh, that is beautiful. I cannot wait to get out and start shooting with this thing. And let me just pull up the pricing page on this real quick. It's not a cheap lens, but when you compare it to what else it would take to get to this point, it is a good value. $1,800, $1,798. I'm on B&H right now. It shows here new item coming soon. As I understand, these are shipping to the stores this week. So if you have pre-ordered one, you should be getting it shortly. If you decide to buy one, scroll down. There's a link below. Um, you can grab it from there, and it, it will be available, of course, in all your usual suspect places. Um, and that's about that. So if you've got any questions about it, stick around. We're going to do a live Q&A. Anything you want to know, I will do my best to answer it. Uh, let's do it.